right, here is part three of our SOL Earth Science Review, focusing on maps. So first we'll be looking at how to read a map, and the most important thing about reading a map is latitude and longitude. Okay, so our latitudes, remember, are lines that go horizontally, okay? They are measured with degrees north or degrees south of the equator. They go the same direction that the equator goes, that's why they're either north or south of the equator. The other lines are the lines of longitude. Those are our up and down lines, okay? And they are measured in either east or west of the prime meridian, which if you remember, crosses through Greenwich, England. All right, and roughly 180 degrees longitude is the international date line, but we remember it's not really a straight line. So when we're here looking at this map of the world, all right, and someone gives you coordinates, they're always going to give you latitude first and then longitude. So if I said what's 10 degrees north and... 75 degrees west that would lead you to 10 degrees north and now we're going 75 degrees west so right here in South America so those are the important things to remember you do latitude first longitude second latitude is measured in north south longitude is east west and remember latitude goes horizontal lines longitude are up and down lines Topographic maps show us elevation or the lay of the land, right? So you can see here in this picture how we get a topographic map. So a topographic map is just that series of circles on the map. So that shows us elevation. Each line or circle on the map represents a specific elevation, okay, of whatever piece of land you're trying to measure here. All right, going over some terminology, we have a contour line. Those are each of the lines on the map. All right, the darker lines are referred to as index contours. Those will most often be numbered, so we can then tell the contour interval or how much this map increases by. So if we're looking at here to find the contour interval, we know we have 100 and then our next one is 200 so how many you do 200 minus 100 equals 100 now how many steps do we have to climb one two three 100 divided by three so roughly uh, that contour interval will be 33.3 .3. they're not all going to be like that normally they're nice round even numbers like down here this one actually tells you, always look for that first, this one tells you what the contour interval is. Okay, so this one goes up by 20 meters, so each line is worth 20 meters. So another thing I'd like to point out on these contour, I mean topographic maps, is this here, this river. You know it's a river because it goes through these V-shaped contour lines. And you can tell the direction of the river by two ways. Either that we know that a river goes from areas of high elevation, they flow downhill. Rivers flow downhill, so they go from high elevation to low elevation. Or you can use these V's as an indicator. The V's actually point upstream. Another feature on a topographic map you need to be aware of is this right here with these little hatcher lines. A circle with the hatcher lines means it's a depression or a decrease. Okay, so the little tiny circles without hatcher lines mean it's, that there's a peak. If the lines are really close together, that means that it's really steep right there. If their lines are farther apart or there's not a lot of lines, then it means it's relatively flat. Okay, so <clears throat> looking at this map, let's try and figure out which direction Rush Creek flows. So we could do it two ways. We could say, hey, look. 4,200, 4,000. So it must go this way because rivers flow downhill. So it flows in the north direction. It's 
It's okay for rivers and creeks and streams to flow north. It's not okay for them to flow uphill, though. All right, or the uh, the opposite here, right? These go upstream, so this means it's going downstream. All right, making a topographic map profile. So that's taking the topo map here and looking to see what it looks like along the side. So there's always going to be some kind of line that you're drawing uh, through the topo map. So we know, hey, what does it look like from the side point of this? Alright, so what you would do after you get your line drawn is every time your line comes in contact with the contour line, you bring it down and make a point on your graph below. And it sh will turn out and give you exactly what it looks like from the side. Now it's very important that you space these out appropriately because you see how close these ones are together? If you just plotted them an even distance, you would never know that this side is super steep. So you need to make sure to do that. All right, and then the other way that you need to do it if the graph isn't below is to remember get a separate sheet of paper and just do the same thing. Make a mark every time it comes in contact with the contour line and then you would take this piece of paper and stick it on a piece of graph paper and graph it. So then you would have like 10, 20, 20, 10, 10, 20, and then you'd have some kind of some kind of graph going on there. All right, just another way to show you the topo profile. Again, over here, same thing. Every time your line comes in contact with the contour line, you make a point on your graph below. And notice you have two peaks or hills right there. Now what I want you to do on your paper is I want you to answer these questions. So, could the elevation at the peak, or B, be 1,410 meters? Just answer yes or no. If it's a no, give me about how many you think it could be. Feel free to pause the video if need be. All right, now I want you to find the elevation at letter E. What is the elevation difference between A and B? So find out what A and B are worth and then find the difference between them. Could the elevation at F be 417 meters? Tell me yes or no. If it's no, tell me how many you think it could be. All right, if you walked a straight line from D to C, see this gentleman here standing at D, straight line from D to C, would you walk over a ridge or down a valley? Now, last question. Just by looking at the map, would it be easier to head down from the peak going east or north? Give me, tell me which direction and then explain why.